Namaskar. In this video, we will discuss a couple functions useful for transferring data. Save, load, and text read. There is a way to save data stored within current MATLAB variables, rather than creating a script wherein you generate data afresh. The command is called save, and the syntax is a little different than other functions. Here, all the input fields are separated by spaces. The first indicates the file name, and all remaining inputs are the names of the variables that you want to save. Let's look at the same example within MATLAB. First, I generate the three vectors length, width, and area. Note that each one appears in the workspace. Remember that this is the temporary memory. The variables are holding information now, but that would be lost if we type the clear command or close MATLAB. To save these variables more permanently, we now use the save command. After this processes, notice that example 1 appears in my current folder. This is a .mat file and can be accessed by MATLAB later. The .mat file is the most convenient way to save data if you are working only in MATLAB. However, if you want to exchange the data with other programs, the .mat extension likely won't be read properly. Instead, for the most general access, you can save as an ASCII file. The syntax to do that is shown here. Include the appropriate extension on your file name, I prefer .txt, and after the list of variables, type dash ASCII. Let's look at this in MATLAB. I enter the command. After processing, this new file appears in my current folder. Notice the icon for the .txt file is different than the icon for the .mat file. Let's compare these files outside of MATLAB. In my computer's file explorer, I try opening the .mat file using Notepad. As you can see, it looks a little funny. But the .txt file opens nicely with a basic text editor like Notepad. I can see the three rows of data, length, width, and area, that I saved from MATLAB. Now let's move the data in the other direction. The load command allows us to pass in data from an external file. It is most conveniently used with the .mat file, since each variable is loaded individually. For a standard text file, however, some extra work needs to be done. First, all the data is loaded in as a single table. Then, to extract each individual variable, array indexing is used for each row separately. Here in MATLAB, I type the clear command. So, the workspace is now empty, and the three variables are gone. If I load in the .mat file, all three of those variables appear again in the workspace. For the .txt example, I clear the workspace again. Now I load in the example2 file. We see just one variable appears. This variable holds a 3 by 21 matrix, or in other words, all three rows of data in a single table. So with this bit of extra work, I can successfully isolate the three original variables but now with new names of my choosing. Oftentimes, data files are lengthy and we only want to import specific sections of the data. For more control when loading in text data, we can use the text read function. A common syntax is shown here, but others are also available. The first input argument is the name of the file holding the data. The second input argument is a string that lists the data types within each column. We'll see an example next slide. And the third input argument indicates how many rows of data to read. The output arguments on the left side will be the variable names for the columns of data that are imported. The length of this list must match with the number of columns being imported. Let's say we have this small data set here. Within the text file, we see columns for each of these five students' first names, last names, blood type, age, and GPA. I need to make a note that the first three columns are all text or strings, the fourth column is all whole numbers, and the last column is floating point numbers. Now, in MATLAB, with the data file saved in my current folder, 
I can import all of this information with the command shown here. On the left side, I include the names for the variables I want to create. First name, last name, blood type, age, and GPA. The first input argument is the file name. Then for the second input argument, I list out all the data types as shown. Remember, the first three columns are strings, so I use percent %s. The fourth column was of whole numbers, so I use percent %d. And the last column was floating point, so I use percent %f. After entering the command, all five of those variables holding the column data is now in the workspace. Notice how the string data is stored within cell arrays, but the numeric data as numeric vectors. Finally, I can also extract only specific columns of data. Using the command shown here, I will ignore the student's blood type and age. How? By placing asterisks within the data type listing of those two columns. Correspondingly, I need to reduce the output argument list to hold just three variable names. Now when the command is entered, only those three columns are imported. Is this process tedious? Yes, it can be. But in order to analyze real-world data, we need to pass it into the program somehow. This is one method of doing so.